Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today... I'm going to be showing you a new Tapu Finny card. Apparently, Tapu Bulu doesn't get a new card in Fairy Rise. So we're going to have to look at Tapu Finny instead. But I just want it on the record, right? Where's my Bulu? I would like my Bulu, please. But we end up with a Tapu Finny. Hey-ho. I mean, Tapu Finny had a pretty good GX. And then, of course, there's the promo, which we'll be getting soon, which was reprinted with alternate artwork. But, you know... Apparently, we need another one. So it is a fairy Pokemon that has been brought to us and translated by the lovely David Hockman over at rappelmantcg.com slash translations. And it's got 120 HP, which, of course, is much worse than having 130 HP because it means like a Lysopod will get a one-hit KO. Although I suppose with your resistance to darkness, it means that Zoroark GX won't get a one-hit KO so at least we've got that going for us. Retreat cost of one is lovely because a skateboard will give free retreat after rotation. And 120 HP combined with his weakness to metal kind of sucks. Because Dusk Main Necrozma does 60 damage for free energy as a metal Pokemon. Which means they can use the it's not discarding a whole bunch of energy and it's not your GX attack kind of attack. As a man who's played a lot of Dusk Main Necrozma... If you can get a KO using the free energy attack that doesn't involve discarding, you feel good about this, ladies and gentlemen. You feel good. So that's not looking amazing to start off with, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, being a fairy Pokemon does mean you get to hit weakness against stuff like Rayquaza, which is due to be one of the best decks in the format, so I suppose that ain't too bad. And then fairy's got some new tricks lately, like Mina, that lets you search your deck for a fairy energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. So, you know... Could be worse, ladies and gentlemen. So what does it actually do? Well, the first attack, one fairy, one colorless energy, though we've got some better ways to pay this. Flip a coin. If head, shuffle your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your opponent's deck. And what I find so interesting about this, first of all, it's Tapu Finney's GX attack. Secondly, Tapu Finney's GX attack couldn't be used if your opponent had no bench Pokemon. Because obviously if you get rid of their active and they've got no bench, you win the game. I mean, for Tapu Finney GX, it had to be a rule. Because otherwise, you go second and you need to get a basic energy to win. Because it's a single energy on a basic Pokemon, so you can just do this over and over again. If there wasn't that extra rule on the GX it would be kind of broken and so many games would be decided with it. So I do see the point here. So now, our question is, can we win games on turn one with this Tapu Finny? And the answer is, oh my goodness, yes, we actually can. If you go second and your opponent passes the turn with just one Pokemon active, you can win the game turn one. And bearing in mind, right, this is coming out in a post-Bridget world. Nowadays, turn one, everyone uses Tapu Lele and searches out a Bridget to go and get free basic Pokemon. Well, you can't do that post-rotation because there'll be no Bridget. Some people inevitably will start using Pokemon Fan Club as an alternative. But you know what? That might not always be good enough so people might not play it. Which means we're going to see stuff like Turn one, Cynthia, new hand of six cards. Turn one, Lily, draw until you've got eight cards in your hand. Maybe even turn one, Steven's Resolve, lets you search for any free cards, but then your turn ends, so you can't play those cards till next time. Sure, there's going to be plenty of people out there playing Brooklet Hill to search out basics, or playing an increased count of stuff like Nest Ball, or coming in the same set as Tapu Lele, Net Ball, lets you search for any basic grass, energy, or Pokemon. But there's still going to be plenty of games, plenty of games, where your opponent isn't able to get a second basic out turn one, and then it's your go. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if they can't get a second basic, you need a Mina and an Energy for the win. Because you see, Mina has made this easier than it otherwise would have been. All you do is you attach an Energy normally, 
You use Mina to go and get yourself an energy. Then you've got two energy on there, and it's flip a coin. Now, I know it's flippy, and I know you need a Mina. I understand all of this. But it's a turn one win without having to play the game. That's okay by me. And the thing is, if you've got a literal situation, flip the coin and you win the game, you're going to take it. Now, if you flip tails, then you've lost your supporter for the turn and you've lost your energy attachment for the turn. But that really just means you've got to be very careful about when you choose to use this. If you've got a Cynthia in hand and a really good matchup, maybe you don't go for the turn one win. You just play the game normally because you've got a decent start and you're pretty sure you're going to win anyway, especially if your opponent's having a rough start. If your opponent's got four other bench Pokemon and you've got nothing, you don't use this. This is for a situation where you're short on time, or you're not sure that you're going to win, or that you've got enough in your hand that you can afford to use Mina as your supporter for the turn, and then you're off and rolling. Now, this isn't just a turn one attack, but what we've been talking about for the last few minutes is using it turn one. Yes, you have to hit your Mina, Boo Hiss, etc. Yes, you have to get an energy, but then it becomes flip a coin to win the game. Now, of course, let's not forget the Victini from Guardians Rising does allow you to reflip if you don't get what you want, giving you a 75% chance to win in such a situation. And I should also probably mention that in Expanded, you've got Max Elixir. Now, that can only attach energy to the bench, but you know what? Maybe you can get back into the active anyway. And if you can, here's another option. Now, if we go beyond turn one, then we open up into a whole bunch of other things we can do. Obviously, in a Gardevoir deck, you can use Secret Spring to get this going in a single turn. You can use Counter Gain to reduce the attack cost if you're behind on prizes, down to just a Fairy Energy. Or if you're behind on prizes, you can use Counter Energy here to pay the cost in one go. And here's the thing. I've been talking about this as a cheeky turn one win, and I do think there's a lot of potential here for a cheeky turn one win. But I also think there will be plenty of times you want to use this. You go first on your opponent's first turn of the game. They have a ho-ho down. They use a Kiawe. Okay. So you then use this to get rid of the ho-ho with all the energy and just undo all of their energy attachments. People use Tapu Fini's GX attack. So why would they not want to use this attack? Anytime Tapu Fini's GX attack would have been good, this would have been good. You're playing against a Sylveon deck, and they're doing that thing where they play a 101 line of Gardevoir to try and take out whatever you have rolling. So as soon as that Gardevoir's in the active, or if you can catch it with a Guzma, you use this to take it off the field, and because they're only playing one rare candy, that's it, it's gone for the game. Anytime your opponent has one good Pokemon on the field, this can be good. Anytime your opponent doesn't have a bench, so you can win by getting rid of their active, this is good. Anytime your opponent's active Pokemon is way better than any of their bench Pokemon, this is good. Frankly, I refuse to believe that a GX attack that we saw play is all of a sudden terrible because it takes a second energy and a coin flip. I still think this is going to be great. Yes, there's a coin flip, but stuff like Super Scoop Up and Crushing Hammer have had coin flips. Because you know what? If they didn't have coin flips, they'd be too gosh darn good. Heck, Pokemon Catcher was so good, they had to errata it to give it a coin flip. I like this. It's a basic Pokemon. It's one card in your deck and it could win you games. As for the second attack, Fairy Fairy Colorless, 100 damage plus Confusion. I mean, it does the numbers quite nicely. With Weakness, you're getting a one-hit KO on Rayquaza or Ultra Necrozma, so that's quite nice. And that's about it. Confusion's pretty nice because it will basically two-hit KO anything if they flip Tails on Confusion. Confusion, they flip a coin if they want to attack. Heads, the attack works. Tails, it fails, and they take 30 damage. If you confuse them and they flip tails, you're essentially doing 230 with this over two turns. 230 will be enough to basically get rid of anything. It's a decent little attack, 
But come on, I keep telling you about new fairy Pokemon lately. Would you rather have this over a Xerneas Prism Star to put free energy on an attack? I wouldn't. Okay, to be fair, Xerneas Prism Star can't use counter gain, but that's pretty much the only difference. Otherwise, it might as well be fairy, fairy, fairy. Would you really rather have this over a Mimikyu GX? I probably wouldn't. Mimikyu GX has got no weakness. We've kind of been spoiled lately with fairy Pokemon. And there's a whole bunch of them I'd rather use than this. Not to say it's terrible. But it is to say the second attack alone doesn't make me excited. But the second attack being quite nice. While the first attack is potentially game ending. Yes. Anyone who doesn't think this first attack is good wasn't paying attention to all the people teching in Tapu Finny, which did for a while get teched into Golisopod decks because they were playing Rainbow Energy and the GX attack is really, really useful. I'm going to be giving Tapu Finny four Wossies purely for the first attack. And I know some of you are going to want to disagree with me, but that's cool. That's a comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. Tell me I'm being too generous. I'm cool with it. Or tell me I waited too long to do this video because this card is good enough that it should have been done a day or two ago. I don't mind. Let's have a chat. And while we're chatting, you know, click that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, And go check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio where that can be done. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.